welcome YouTube. Thank you so much for joining me today. I am Cannibal Red, and this video is a quick battle. Quick battle numero uno, first one ever uh, going up on the channel. But these are going to allow me to bring daily content to you because I can uh, record lots of them at a time and release them daily and keep you all entertained. Uh, we're going to do three battles in a row with our team. So uh, this is going to be one video. You're going to see this team two more times. Uh, over the next two days, but let's see what our team is. We've got the Mega Sharpedo. Uh, we have Sleeves the Mian Chow. We have Donfin, Rotom Heat, Doblade, and Galvantula. So really, really fun team. I'm excited about it. And this was our battle against our opponent, Two Spoons, who is rocking Umbreon, Crobat, Agron, Heliosk, Infernape, and Gyarados. Now, Gyarados is scary with the Dragon Dancing. Infernape is always a threat, but the biggest thing on his team uh, that I was afraid of is the Umbreon. So Umbreon is such a huge tank, such a huge wall with the Wish Protect. It can provide support for his team. But anyway, let's get into it. I'm expecting him to lead Agron, so I lead Mian Chao. Now Mian Chao is here to apply Fake Out Pressure. So that's exactly what we're going to do on the first turn. We're going to slap this guy in the face with our sleeves and uh, not do much damage. We see it's, it's almost nothing, but at least we got some chip. And on this next turn, I don't feel very threatened right now, so I'm actually going to go for the high jump kick on this guy. We see the high jump kick connect, and it critical hits him, brings him down to 15% HP, so we are doing so much damage. On that turn, he got Stealth Rocks up, which is going to hurt our team, especially the Rotom. Now, he switches, and I went for the high jump kick again, so this Crobat's going to come in here and get hit in the face by my foot. Boom! Doesn't do good damage, uh, not much at all, and we have to get out of here because we are not about to come in here and get Brave Birded, so we have to make plays. We switch into Doblade, who is going to be immune to the Poison type and resist the Flying type, so we're going to come in here right away, take a Brave Bird, it does diddly bupkis to us, and we feel really comfortable that he can't hurt us, so we're just going to set up a Sword Stance. Um, if he switches out, the Sword Stance has boosted us to plus two, so we're better against whatever comes in. We do see the U-turn, chip damage, and the switch. So he's going to bring in Umbreon. And this is the most questionable play of the match because um, while Umbreon is a defensive wall, I have access to Sacred Sword, which is a fighting type move. And we're going to see how much damage it does plus two on this turn. Knocks him down to 2%, um, I'm sorry, 3% HP. So he hated that. On this next turn, we're going to Shadow Sneak priority him and kill him before he can even catch his wish. That is the biggest defensive wall of our opponent's team down. I mean, within the first seven turns, it's over. Heliosk now comes in, and I don't know if I can outspeed, so I stayed in. Uh, turns out, I don't outspeed, and I had to take a Thunderbolt and go down. So, we lost our Doblade. I'm going to bring in Rotom, who takes Stealth Rock damage, but I can scare the Heliosk out. So, knowing he's going to switch, I went for the Will-O-Wisp, hoping to burn whatever comes in. Instead, he brings in the Infernape, predicting Fire-type moves, catches the Will-O-Wisp, no problem, can't be burned. So, that's not very good for me, and I'm not feeling super comfortable here, so I'm just going to Thunder Wave him, uh, do as much damage as I, you know, per paralyze him, slow him down. Uh, it's kind of all I can do at this point. We can see his close combat did massive damage to us, so we're not happy right now. Now, because he's uh, slowed down because of the paralysis, we can now Volt Switch out and preserve our uh, Rotom for later. So, Volt Switch connects, does really good damage, and we go ahead and bring in the Donfin. Now, I'm thinking Donfin can take a few hits. Uh, to my surprise, the close combat does massive amounts of damage, and Donfin has to take way more than he wanted to on that turn. Now, he decides to preserve the Infernape and switches into Gyarados. Um, I actually packed Stone Edge, so predicting, you know, if he stayed in, I was going to hit Infernape with a Stone Edge and kill him, and if he switched, whatever came in got hit with a Stone Edge. It turned out to be the right play. Gyarados took a lot of damage, hits me with the Waterfall, flinches me one turn, the next turn kills me, and Donfin is down. So, uh, we see the Moxie on the Gyarados. His attack is raising every time he KOs something on my team, which means he's a pretty big threat. But we can send in Mian Chao and apply that Fake Out Pressure again. Man, Mian Chao is so good. You can just switch him in over and over again and slap things in the face for free. Now, he does still have the Crobat, which checks me really well. Uh, I'm going to have to switch out, and I decide to make a play here. I switch out into the Rotom to sack him off. So, Rotom comes in. Rotom 
dies to stealth rocks. That was that was intentional. So because what that allows is his brave bird hits nothing, or his uh, he actually roosts on that turn. So if he had attacked, it would have hit nothing. He decided to go for the recovery move. But either way, I got to switch into Galvantula without having to take damage. That is exactly what I wanted. We take a brave bird, which tells me he's defensive, and fire back at this guy with a thunder that's going to KO him. Now that play right there was really really important. Uh, because he was a defensive crowbat, he did not have the power to kill us with a brave bird. And because of that, we were able to kill crowbat. Things would have been totally different if he had been running a slightly stronger uh, variant of the crowbat. But we're in here now, again with Mian Shao, applying the fake out pressure to that uh, Heli Whisk on the other side of the field. And uh, I'm thinking I can probably outspeed him, so I go ahead and stay in, but take a Thunderbolt. Now, the fact that that Heliwisk outsped my Mian Shao is really kind of setting me off right now, informing me that he is max speed. He's as fast as he can be, because uh, it's not easy to outspeed a Mian Shao. Knowing that, I have to bring in Sharpedo and Protect. Now, this Protect allows me to get a speed boost, which is important because it's the only way I can beat Heliwisk. Now, Sharpedo is my very last Pokemon, he's my only option, and my opponent has four Pokemon left. So I go Mega and I Earthquake. Yes, I pack Earthquake on Sharpedo for situations like this. So I managed to kill uh, the Heliosk. In comes Infernape. I'm like, please don't have Mach Punch. I'm going to protect to find out if you do. If he had Mach Punch, game over. I lose right there. Instead, he's packing close combat. No Mach Punch. And that tells me I'm going to outspeed. Kill him on the next turn. Critical hit him just for fun. And that is two KOs for Sharpedo late game. My opponent only has two Pokemon left. Gyarados is one of them. Um, we pack the crunch for Gyarados. Boom, stab, knocks him out. And there's only one Pokemon left, Mega Agron, which we can Earthquake. And that, guys, is a late game sweep. Now, let's just watch the Earthquake happen. Boom, Agron tumbles, goes down. And guys, that is why you need late game sweepers. If I had brought Sharpedo in earlier and he had taken damage, um, or if he had get, gotten knocked out early game, I wouldn't have been able to do this. I would have lost the game. But because I saved my fast, strong Pokemon till the very end of the game, I was able to come in and KO four Pokemon that the rest of my team had weakened. That is how you play Pokemon, guys. That is the importance of late game sweepers. Now, I know this isn't my tutorial section, but really... My intention here is is to inform y'all, to help y'all uh, know more about competitive play and uh, love it like I do. So there you go, a lesson on late game sweepers. We totally wrecked that dude's day uh, with our earthquaking uh, Mega Sharpedo. So I think some of these guys are definitely going to get nicknames. I think in the next video I'll have to I'll have to change their nicknames away because I'm loving these Pokemon and they need some better names than the stationary ones. But Thank you guys for watching. I hope you really enjoyed this. Like I said, I'm going to try and keep uh, a video a day coming to you so that you can enjoy Pokemon content all the time and uh, love the game. Anyway, if you have suggestions for teams, I would love to see them because making daily content involves lots of team building and it's really stressful. So uh, if you have suggestions or Pokemon or whole teams that you'd like to see, post them down below. Uh, leave a comment. Leave a like if you like this video. And I will keep this stuff um, posting up on the channel. Thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it. And you all have a great day.